The chronological Bible reading for March 25th is Joshua chapters 9 through 11. In chapter 9, Joshua and the Israelites are deceived by the Gibeonites, the Hivites who live in Gibeon, who come to them and say they traveled a very far distance, make a pact with us. We've heard how destructive you are against your enemies, how amazing and powerful your God is. We want to be on your side. The Israelites make the mistake of not seeking God's counsel, and they enter into a pact that they shouldn't have. And just a couple chapters later, the other kings in the area, when they find out that the Gibeonites have partnered up with the Israelites, they decide they're going to come and ransack Gibeon, destroy those traitors, the Hivites of Gibeon, Send messages to Joshua and the Israelites. Come and save us. Remember the treaty we have. And God uses that to deliver those five remaining kings into the hands of the Israelites. Even when God's people make a mistake, God's ultimate purpose is not going to be thwarted. However, we get to choose like Joshua did when he asked the angel of the Lord, whose side are you on? And the angel said, neither. We choose not to try to get God to come onto our side, but we can fall in line with what God is doing. And when we do that, lives are spared. Heartache is largely avoided. We come through unscathed and God gets the victory. When we make the mistake of not walking with God, we will suffer the curse of not having obeyed God. But what's amazing is, even when Joshua foolishly fails to seek the Lord's counsel, because God had already ordained that the Israelites were going to take the land of Canaan, when the Canaanite kings assembled against the ally of Israel, who deceived Israel, when entering into that treaty, God still gives Israel the victory when they come to defend their deceivers. Somewhat reminiscent of the story of Jacob and Esau. Jacob deceived, and God still was with him. Even later changed his name to Israel. We have this interesting story in Joshua 10 about how the sun and the moon stood still. Now, if you believe what we are taught in our classrooms and on the History and Discovery and other science channels, and what the mainstream has been indoctrinating us with for most of, if not all of our lives, it would be impossible for the sun to stand still because the sun's not moving. We are spinning on the Earth's axis and the moon is orbiting the Earth. And the earth is orbiting the sun. But it's interesting that in Joshua chapter 10, verse 12, on the day Yahweh gave the Amorites over to the Israelites, Joshua spoke to Yahweh in the presence of Israel, sun stand still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of Aijalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, and the nation took vengeance on its enemies. So the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed its setting almost a full day. There has been no day like it before or since when Yahweh listened to a man because Yahweh fought for Israel. It's interesting to me because alleged science would teach us that we are just a little speck in a huge galaxy in the midst of millions of other galaxies and this universe is ever expanding and it all started from an explosion and we're all part of this series of random mishaps that just happened to result in this amazing creation that is designed more intricately than any Rolex watch and so we either choose to believe the unprovable science that we've been told to, and I say science somewhat tongue-in-cheek, because science is really seeking truth in response to very real questions. But today, much of the time, the scientists will not take questions when you 
ask them about their processes. And so it's concerning, it's even disturbing what we are taught as fact, which is no basis in truth at all. Or you could believe the biblical authors that seemed to believe that the earth was the center of creation, that the sun even rotates around the surface of the earth. This might seem ridiculous, and of course it does, if you've wholly bought in to the theories that have been offered to us as fact. Friends, in the same way that evolutionary scientists have taken the theory, the unproven, unprovable theory of evolution, and presented it to us as fact to give us a case for not having an intelligent designing creator as the source of it all. If they've lied to us about whether or not the vaccines are safe, if they've lied to us about what our politicians are actually trying to do, if they've lied to us about our history, if they've lied to us about where we came from and where we are going, if they've tried to cover up biblical archaeology, and maybe they're trying to cover up biblical cosmology as well, where do we draw the line on what's true and what's not? And I would recommend that we choose to believe what we can prove when it comes to science, and we choose to believe what God has said when it comes to faith. If the people of God are going to rise up and be the sons of God that creation itself is waiting for, then we need the whole truth, not just bits and pieces mixed in with falsehoods that have been handed to us on a silver platter ever since kindergarten. Something to think about. I encourage you. Do your own research. Seek the truth. Ask for the Holy Spirit to confirm what is true. And let God form your opinions about where we came from and where we're going rather than man. God bless you, my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We'll see you tomorrow.